Hi everyone, my name is Jenny and this is Brian. Hey guys, nice to meet you. <laughs> I feel like this is my first time as a... <laughs> I'm looking at you right there, so I'm like, you're talking to me and I know you're next to me, but I'm looking at you here. <laughs> you can tell that I'm nervous. I feel like the first time that we did this, when we talked with the mukbang, I felt like it was a little more comfortable, I guess, and a more comfortable scene. Maybe because I was like, because you were eating. Nothing. You know what I mean? I was You're too busy, to busy paying attention to, to, to all your the burger. Chicken McNuggies. Yes. Okay, so. So, this is Brian. This is uh, my partner and also the father of my children. Um, today's video, we I have already mentioned in another video that I'm going to be adding to this one. It's going to be all over the place. Um, I've been filming for the past month um, just little clips here and there of everything that's been going on because I know that I wanted to make a video, but I also wasn't in the right headspace to know how it was going to be, what I was going to do. So it was, it's not planned. So sorry if it's all over the place but it's gonna have to be that way because it's all I have so um, the reason why he's here is because I need him to be with me to talk about Brayden so uh, as you guys know uh, we just had a baby and he is a little over a month now he is in the hospital and he was born at 25 weeks that's six months of pregnancy if you don't know well I know <laughs> <laughs> we also have two other kids uh, if you go back to our other videos you will see them um, we have a seven-year-old daughter her name is Brissett and a five-year-old son his name is Jaden and so for right now we're gonna be talking about Brayden and his first little month of life beautiful month of life I feel like everything has been going fast but slow at the same time you know it's, it's really nice to see him growing and gaining his little weight we can start seeing the little differences in his face right little cheeks are getting a little more full and it's really nice to see that he's doing really well you know a lot better than the very first weeks yes yes uh, so since you already kind of touched up of how everything was going inside the hospital you know I kind of want to go based off of maybe when we found out like hey your blood pressure is not going down we've been trying because they've been trying to monitor it for about three days at that point right at that point it was a very scary feeling you know just because we see it doing this and then we think it's at a good point but it just skyrockets, right, skyrockets again and then that's when the, the doctors come in and tell us like hey this is gonna happen today and I feel like you and I were both I don't know I feel like we weren't surprised but it was so surreal to us yeah we were ready for all of it we were anticipating it but once it was already happening it's always you know yeah it's always hard yes. no matter how much you prepare for it yeah because we as soon as we went to the hospital we were mentally prepared saying there's a huge possibility that our son is going to be born. And we were just praying to make sure that everything went well. That was our biggest concern. We wanted to make sure that you were healthy and we wanted to make sure that Brayden was going to be healthy. So um, I just remember that, that part where they were telling us, like, okay, it's going to happen right now. And they literally started the process super fast. And it was, it was scary. It was surreal just, just to see that they were setting you up, and then they came and got, and they got you, you know. Yeah. They got you, and they took you, and 
Of course, I wasn't gonna leave. I wasn't gonna, you know, let you leave by yourself. So I was over there just following you. That's what you always I do. <laughs> <laughs> you and my babies always. But um, it's just that wait time because of course we've we've had this this um, this happened you know with our first two kids when they had the c-sections and they told me hey um, you're gonna wait here you're gonna wait about for like 10 minutes 15 minutes and you know and then we'll bring you back in and I was like okay so it's yeah because once way. you're doing a cesarean first they bring you in to get the epidural and you can't come in with me yeah. and we didn't know that with our very first pregnancy so yeah. it was something that we were pre prepared for after but during the first pregnancy we were a little bit jumpy we we're like no he's gonna stay with me like throughout mm -hmm. everything because if you guys do something wrong he's gonna be here mm -hmm. yeah. to make sure you guys are sued <laughs> <laughs> we were so defensive yeah. about that we were always and we have always been we're like no and with reason we we have yeah. had reason too because we had to be our own advocates during um, all of the pregnancies, especially this last one with Brayden. Yeah. We had to speak up, and even though the doctors thought everything was going well, even though they saw the big old file of things that had gone wrong and how long I was at the hospital and all the medication I was on, which happened this last time, just for longer, for seven days instead of uh, two days, which is usually what happens, right? Yeah. So... Yeah, with reason, we're, we had a lot of reason to be the way that we were, you yeah. know, you know, being so young and experiencing everything, like, it's funny how prepared we were for everything that happened with Brigham. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. So, so, let's talk about um, the night that he was, that he came out, the night he came out. Okay, so yeah, so... They're taking you, and like you said, they went to go give you the, what is it called, the epidural? The epidural, yeah. They give you the epidural, and at that point, I wasn't there with you, but those 15 minutes that they told us, that like, oh, it's going to be 15 minutes, it was not 15 minutes, it was like 30, it was running 40 minutes, and it was just, I remember just being so anxious, is the word? Yeah. I was like, so, I was worried, you know, because I'm like, where is where's the doctor why can't I go in there I've never been away for this long like I, I, it wasn't it was worrying was, you that you were gone for that long yeah I'm like what's going on and of course because I know your your blood pressure was like way up there I was scared and I just I remember I was praying I remember I was just praying and saying like please take care of her please take care of my son and make sure that nothing happens to them like, and I just kept repeating that and repeating that and just kind of looking at the clock. And it was, it was scary, you know? And then finally they pulled me in and I got to see you and you, you know, I'm over here with my camera. <laughs> Remember that? I yeah, was we like, have that clip. Yeah, probably so. probably added in here. Even though, I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so I'm over here like with the camera. Sir, you can't, you can't record in here. I'm like, excuse me, <laughs> you know. But I was like, okay, I guess. Pictures, I know they pictures. tell us that every time, but <laughs> we assume that we're allowed to because we've seen people on YouTube yeah. posting, and we're like, why does everyone keep telling us? <laughs> yeah, like, what do we pay them like under the table? Like, yo, mm -hmm. let me record, or you know, maybe, but yeah. But you got a good little four minute recording and. And then it was just, at that point, it was just a waiting game. 
front because I remember they were just I looked at you and I could tell they were just tugging at you and I was like does that hurt do you feel any pressure do you feel anything you're like I just feel the tugging I can't feel anything and then do you remember what happened or no no so. And every time that it's in the moment, I try and tell myself to remember, but I can't because there's so much going on in my head. Yeah. So much that I'm wanting to remember, like what medicines are they using? Um, what are they telling me about the baby? I'm keeping track of my pressure. I had to keep looking back at it. It's too much. And then I end up realizing that I don't remember a lot. Yeah. It's kind of like a blur. It's so, what happened. so at that point, you were, we were looking at each other and we were just listening to them because we couldn't see the hat that curtain. And then I know that you just hear him, okay, okay, he's coming out, he's coming out. And then as soon as I, I heard that, I heard the little, the little cry, <laughs> a smallest little cry because of course yeah. he's so tiny. So it wasn't like our baby's cry, like, a, like Rosette and Jada. Little, 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 such a faint little cry. And I was like, you could barely hear it. Yeah. And I was like, I hear him. You know, I was like, I can hear him. So then, um, I remember right away, I just looked up and I saw him and it was like, it was a smaller version of our kids. Like, it looked just like our kids. I was just like, what the heck? Like, they all look so identical when they come out. Yeah, so when we had Brissette, she came out a little bit purple, right? A little bit purple, yeah, purple and... Pinkish. Yeah, purple pink, like a regular baby. And when we had Jaden, and they showed me the baby, because they're, they're cesarean, so they come and they show me the baby. I remember he came. It was you, the one that came to the doctor. It was just you. I can't remember. For Brayden? Yeah, for Jaden. For Jaden. It was me. It was you carrying Jaden, right? Yeah. I remember just seeing the baby, and I was confused I was like what's going on <laughs> I swear I was confused I was like it's my medication like am I on too much medication like that's for Zeth yeah because it looks so identical I was like that's for Zeth and I I saw the face was my daughter it was just like her and uh, I was confused for a split second and then I I collected my thoughts and I looked at the baby and I looked down at the hands and they're pale white and I'm like that's not Brazil yeah. and I keep looking down and then I see a little you know a little boy part <laughs> and I'm like oh my gosh I just had Brazette's twin <laughs> I remember that you're tripping out you're like, what they're five and Identical. seven now and they still we still get asked if they're twins yeah even though one is taller than the other they look the same though they yeah. really do but Brayden literally looks just like them. Just he was way, way smaller. He was so yeah. tiny, but the face is the same. Yeah. So as soon as he was born, though. Um, but so were the know. other babies, too. I want to add that in there. Um, our babies, um, Junior and Jax, they looked the same. Yeah. They looked the same as Brayden. They looked the same as Brissette and Jaden. I don't know what's going on, but... Obviously, we can see whose genes are the alpha right here. They literally look like twins, all of them. So it's like copy and paste, copy and paste, Pretty copy much. and paste. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay, so let's see. All right, so as soon as I heard the little cry, um, I took a couple of pictures and just so I could show you. But they already had a bunch of people there. They had a team basically of nurses doctors and everything so as soon as they got him they took him right away started cleaning him up making sure he was breathing and everything and they had him on this little which kind of looked like an incubator but it wasn't even closed so they had him on that and everybody was just touching his arms touching his legs feeling up on him making sure he was breathing making sure his heartbeat was good and they were like they were just all talking and mumbling. You could just hear, like, you don't want the lungs to collapse. None of that. You just hear that. And then, at that point, it's always, like, as soon as the babies are born, 
I always go with them just to make sure where they go because we have had instances where, which with this case with Brayden as well, they were going to give me a wrong tag for him. So if you don't have the right tag, they don't even let you see your baby because it doesn't even match up, right? Yeah. So I was like, no, and we had to fix that. So on the way there, while we're walking, they're fixing it. They gave me the right tags and everything. And that's why it's like, I feel to me, it's very important that as soon as you have a baby, you know, you follow them and make sure you know where they're at. And, you know, you, you watch for all those things because, I don't know, for me, it feels like they might misplace your baby or something or give you somebody else's baby. I have my baby. He has a baby. So what was I saying? Um, they gave you the wrong tag and they were fixing the tag while you were walking with him. Yeah. And I remember right away, they, as soon as they got him off of that little platform thing, they put him into an actual incubator. They had him in there already. They started setting it up as they're walking. They're turning on the heater. They're still having their hands on there there's a, a doctor with this like little I want to say a pump that's hooked up already in his mouth and he's pressing it to kind of give him that that little bit of air to help him breathe you know and it's like that the whole walk and it was a long walk to get to the other side of the, of the hospital so we're just walking and walking and I'm like I'm trying to capture everything that's going on I'm like I'm not going to remember how to get over here so um, we finally get there. Um, they told me, okay, now you know where he's at. This, at this point, we have to take over. And um, we're going to have to do all, all, I guess, their studies and the little exams that they have to do on him. But that's going to have to be private, basically, is what they told me. So right now, um, just go with mommy. Double check on her. Make sure she's okay. And just, you know, in, in about two hours, you guys can come back. Well, me, because you, you weren't going to be able to come back at that time. Yeah. Uh, so you can come back and see him. So I went straight back, and then that's when I got to the room. And I got to the room, we weren't there still. So I started worrying again. Um, I started asking the nurses, I'm like, where's my wife? Where is she? Um, I need an update. Uh, and they're like, oh, they're finishing up on her. They're going to clean her up. And then after that, they're going to bring her back to her room. So I just remember just sitting there on the bench, just waiting. That, that was the, the, the waiting game, pretty much. And then that's when you came in, you know? So I, I got to meet Brayden the day after I had him. I didn't see him at all until the next day um, because he was so little and he they had to work on him, just like you said. It wasn't like the other babies that they were full term and they were able to show me right then and there and yeah. stuff, you know? So they did, they take me, they took me to the room and it was me just sleeping, right? Yeah. I just slept until the next day when I was um, allowed to go see him. And they, I got up and they took me in the wheelchair yeah. with you. Um, so, what happened during that those, that first week? Do you remember exactly what happened with him? Okay, so the first week, um, well, our son was born at one pound and five ounces. So he was really, really tiny. He was only about, what, they say 11 inches long. So he was a really tiny baby. So for sure what they said, he had was trouble breathing, which is why they had the CPAP on him, which is like a little bubble machine that's just blowing. And then that's how they can uh, um, monitor if he's breathing right. Yeah. If the bubbles are going, then that's how you know that he's breathing right. And he was having a lot of episodes. Yeah, but um, the one thing that I do remember you telling me was that the doctor said that him being on the CPAP at 25 weeks being so young was a very good sign yeah because most babies that are born that small usually you, you can't, can't they can't handle it yeah it's too much for them and he was on the CPAP from 
when he was born until now, he's currently still on it. Yeah. So he saw that as a good sign. Right. So, also, during those times, they were still doing his x-rays, making sure his lungs were good and everything, and they started seeing that his, um, I guess he had this IV in his stomach. He started up with an IV in his stomach which was kind of like monitoring his blood and everything as well. And they were seeing that he had a low count of red blood cells, right? And then from there, <laughs> from there, um... You saw that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, from there, as soon as we started hearing that he was gonna maybe need a blood transfusion because it's very common for babies premature babies to need them we started in the works or okay I'm gonna be the the donor right so I started setting up the appointments to make sure we can get the blood ready for him and then also the what was that the, the platelets Wait, he needed right. platelets that was another thing that was that was one of one of the biggest worries I guess because his platelets were not rising up yeah and um, platelets um for them, for the way that they told us, so that we could understand what they were, um, was that he was leaking fluid from his belly button area. Um, his little belly button uh, hadn't fallen off yet, so they told us that because it was leaking, his platelets, his platelet count had decreased. And they mentioned that if it decreases too much, he was gonna need, what is it called? Transfusion or what is it called? He was gonna need platelets. Yeah, he was gonna get a blood transfusion and also platelets, platelets from another donor. Yeah, and so because I was just um, at the hospital with my IV, I wasn't, I'm not allowed, I wasn't allowed to be a donor for him. And we're both the same blood type, so we're O positive, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So right away, you made sure you went to go make the appointment for the blood, yes. and then after that, for the platelets. Yes. So we got that down right away. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember as well. well so How much was he eating during those first moments? His first moments, he was eating two milliliters. 1.5 milliliters. That was every three hours. Every three. No, it was every six hours. Every six hours. That's how it started when he was so tiny. So I started pumping the very day that I had him, right? The very night. That same yeah. night, um, my nurse was so helpful. She literally was pumping for me like she was grabbing my boob and making sure that I take out milk for the baby um, she wanted to make sure that I did that because she saw how long I had been there obviously um, it's her job as a nurse to take care of her client her patients clients <laughs> you, got, you got clients <laughs> but she like went above and beyond she helped me um, pump for two whole days right yeah. And because she was there, I mean, two whole days for her shift is like literally 12 hours. Yeah. So she was helping me pump every three hours for both her shift. Both her shifts that we had her for. So she was making sure that I um, was starting off by giving them milk for the baby because he was going to need it. And she literally helped me start that because I have never pumped before and I'm still pumping now and it, it was very nice to see that how much she helped me I didn't realize how much she was helping me it was just nice for her to help me because of I didn't know what I was doing and <laughs> yeah she was guiding you yeah and she, no she was literally physically <laughs> doing it for me she's like here let's take out let's extract with the hand and you know let's make sure your baby gets his food yeah. she was making sure she took the milk herself to the NICU and you know it made me feel good because it, it was the only thing that I could do for him you know yeah. and she helped me so much yeah she was really nice it was amazing you know I'm so grateful for that that was beautiful because of us yeah 
I feel like the other nurses were more like they were on you type of like kind of like pressuring you I guess yeah you know it didn't it, it didn't make the, the vibe like comfortable to me just seeing it as well it was nothing compared to how the other nurse was yeah we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that after um, because yeah during the very first days the very first week um, that we had Braden, I was breastfeeding breast pumping um, every three hours for 24 hours so Braden was eating uh, 1.5 millimeters right. every six hours. Yes. And so the small amount I was having taken out was more than enough yeah, for him at the moment yeah. because he was so little, you know, yes. one pound, five ounces. He didn't eat a lot. And it started off like that. So he started off at 1.5 millimeters every six hours. Then we found out that, that they had gone up to 1.5 liters every three hours oh yeah every three hours it was like it was pretty fast though yeah it was like two or three days later the only thing that i could keep count of hours. was all the way up to four ounces i think or three ounces right that's the, the last time that i remember i kept count after that they were like yeah he's at four ounces every you know, four five. milliliters sorry four milliliters we were like when did this happen yeah, and then we came back night. and they were like yeah he's at five milliliters and like oh my gosh what do you mean what's going and on then we came back the next day and he was at seven milliliters and it, it was just it kept going up the thing was once he was he at was, seven milliliters though yeah once he was at seven milliliters that's when they they found out they he had a mm -hmm. heart murmur right and he was gonna need help to close up and so a heart murmur is a little hole apparently that's uh usually closes up when a little baby is inside his mommy, right? Or their mommy. And since he wasn't in you anymore, um, he needed that help, you know? So they were telling us since he, he's not having that help, we're gonna have to give him medication to close up the heart murmur. And if that doesn't work, we're gonna give him another dose to see if it helps him close it up. And if that doesn't work, we're gonna have to have a surgery to go in there and close it up ourselves because there's no other way that's gonna happen. So just hearing that, I feel like I really, yeah, was scary. I started panicking. I'm like, well, what is it? What, what can we do? And at that point, it was just having to give him the medicine and just kind of letting his body do the work. And it worked. And it worked. Um, First dose first dose of medicine um it had closed yeah. but then literally right after uh, hearing that he was done with the medication and it worked right away they told us that he was gonna need a blood transfusion right yeah that's when the platelets weren't going up either yeah yeah so that's when we started giving him the so the blood was there for him he, he was everything was ready for when he was gonna need it but then um, the day that they needed to give that we needed to give them the permission to do the blood transfusion after just quickly mentioned that they have uh, the blood ready and it was gonna be a, a donors right and I was like what what do you mean his dad donated blood for him right away everything is set you know and he was like I'm um, sorry what you know and he went in and he checked and he was like oh yeah um, well they they uh, checked his blood and um, they saw that he was negative he had a negative antibody right and during the pregnancy I had a positive antibody E and so during um, the doctors were telling us 
it's just a lot of information to throw, you know, because we're <laughs> backtracking and then starting off where we left off. But basically, um, I found out that I had a positive antibody during my very first, um, they called it fetal demise with Junior. Yeah. So um, that was our baby that we lost in 2018. That was the first time we've heard, we had heard about anything. Term. Yeah. We hadn't heard anything about a positive antibody. We didn't know what it was. And so um, we assumed that that's what, that was the reason why we weren't successful in our pregnancies and our babies um, passed away. But then during the pregnancy with Brayden, the doctors had came to a conclusion that it was probably my pressure that was actually um, killing the babies. It wasn't the positive antibody. Um, they also said that if for any reason he had a negative antibody and at me having a positive antibody, the baby had a 50-50 chance of having either a positive or a negative antibody. And so that itself could be the reason why the babies weren't surviving because if the baby had, like him, a negative antibody, um, it would, my body would automatically start attacking them. So um, with that information, with that information that the doctor gave us just because the baby needed blood transfusion, we found all this information out. Yeah. So we found out that Brian indeed has a negative antibody which means that Brayden has a positive antibody just like me which is also the reason that he survived that he is alive because if he would have had a negative like Brian he my body would have started attacking him instantly yeah, exactly. we are guessing that that's what happened with our other babies yeah we don't know because I also had pressure issues the day that we found out that they were gone so it could have been everything. It could have been everything, and we, we really don't know. We didn't get autopsies, so we will never know. But one thing that we did find out, find out was that. So the doctor said that he wasn't going to be able to use Brian's blood on the baby because uh, if they were, when they were to use his blood, um, it would attack Brayden. It would attack Brayden. And so it was crazy to find that out you know right away um, as soon as the baby needed a blood transfusion and to get the confirmation about everything the doctors were talking to us that were just well, how do you say like not conspiracy theories but like, that were well, they possibly were theories, theories, theories yeah theories. okay so their theories about what could have happened with our other pregnancies and um, to figure out what was going to happen with this one so and it, it, it was true um we ended up finding that out so he ended up getting the blood transfusion and using the donor's blood um he hasn't needed the platelets um no. his belly button he, he it fell off it's, it's closed off. it's beautiful you know it's it's popped out you know a little baby <laughs> so right after the transfusion his body reacted to it very well because I helped him, first of all, with his red blood cells. And after that, like you said, with his belly button, it started helping him close up his little wound. Because on his little belly button, there was a little wetness. Like, if he was, if he kept bleeding and bleeding. And when I saw it, I was like, man, it's probably because of the diaper. The diaper's too tight, you know. But no, it was just that he needed help, you know, to, to be able to close up. So, all of that literally did happen within the first week yeah Everything. um right after that uh, right after that also though the blood transfusion um he had water in his lungs and they were giving him latex they were giving him a medicine that was making him pee it all out so they made they told us not to worry if his uh, diaper is extra yeah. full of water because he had water in his lungs and he had to take it out yeah it's crazy how it works, huh? And, yeah, and the reason why um, they had to do that was because he was having a lot of episodes with the breathing. He was needing a lot of a lot more help throughout the day, um, more often than when he was born. So it, it was confusing them. And they did the x-ray, and then they that's how they found out. Yeah. 
inside. They, they also said that the, it looked like the heart murmur, heart murmur was opening back up. But it didn't. Mm. It looked like it, but it yeah. didn't. Yeah, yeah, but after he finished his uh, medication for that, um, they wanted to make sure that he was okay with his breathing and he was still having episodes. So they were trying to figure out an, uh, what other ways they could help him with his breathing. Um, and they decided to give him a steroid for 10 days, right? And the then steroid. that's when they cut down his feeding. Yeah. Right? So they cut it down to about... He was already at what? When No, when they gave him the, the medication for the heart murmur is when they didn't feed him for that whole day. And he went down on weight. Yeah, he was already he at eight, millil eight milliliters. And then, and then he went back to two. He went back to two. And yeah. it was so sad. We were like, what, what do you mean? He dropped weight. Because he, every single day we go, and you can see a little updated of how many grams he has gained. So just I remember going and, it, and it's just it has a little down arrow showing that he dropped 15 grams 20 grams whatever it was and it was like continuously because that's he was still on the medication so but after that as soon as he got the green light he just started going up and up and up and up on his feedings again since um, they gave him the steroid everything has been really good from there right that was the last time they had to give him medication and that was the last time that he was having problems and having episodes with the CPAP um, well he still has his little no episodes. he was having a lot of episodes yeah, that was the last was time like he was having a lot yeah. enough for them to worry and want to give him any type of medication or look into it like yeah. what, what's causing that every time we go yeah. now everything is just he's been doing good they give us a percentage um that they have him on the cpap oh, which his oxygen they, levels too yeah his oxygen levels and then um they tell us how moody he is and how he cries as soon as his diaper is full, full. how he tries to take off his cpap because he's over it he doesn't want it you know but then as soon as he gets it off He's not breathing well. He told me. So he, he needs it back on there. He told me that when I saw him. Take me home, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's nice. Um, one of the things the nurses did observe was that every time we go and we have skin to skin time with the baby, um, his oxygen levels are really good. So yeah, All his stats, his heartbeat, his oxygen, his CPAP. Everything. Everything, Everything is just, good. He's breathing really big, deep breaths, and it's just like. It's, so it's just nice, insane. you know, yeah. the, the way that they told us that, you know, he's enjoying the time that he gets to feel his mom and his dad. Likes cuddles. He does. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, as of now, though, his weight is. 2.6 ounces so he's two pounds six ounces he's two pounds six ounces now he's eating 21 milliliters every three hours it takes him a whole hour and 15 minutes to eat because it's so big for such a little baby but he's gaining weight he's yeah he's gaining weight slowly um before i remember looking at him and thinking that the bed looked way too big for him you know mm -hmm. it was a bed and then a little tiny baby in there and then <laughs> um, now it looks like a little baby in a bed that's for him so it's nice to see that it's nice to see that he looks like an actual little baby just you know in a tiny version still he's not big enough to come home yet but he's big enough for us to see that mm -hmm. he's doing really well you know so that's the cool update on Brayden right that was the whole 30 days of life um it's September 1st so it's a few days <laughs> Jaden is knocking on the door do you want to open it <laughs>
The hallway light is fine. He's asking if he could sleep with us. So we're recording this video during Brian's sleeping hours. So he's supposed to be sleeping because he's got to be up at 12 to go see Brayden. And then head to work to make it there at 3 a.m. So... Um, I can see right now that the video is 40 minutes long, so um, we're definitely running in on his snacking time. Uh, sleep? What sleep? <laughs> he was a little, like, scared because he said he didn't have his nightlight. I know. So. We're using his nightlight to record this video, <laughs> which is a ring light. You, you don't have to tell him all that. Because their Galaxy Stars nightlight literally doesn't work. Yeah, the little... Thing broke, yeah, the so. charger it just stopped working. We try to put another charger in there, and and it's the actual charging port that got messed up. Okay. Yeah. So that's Brayden's thirty days update. Oh well. Yeah, his very older. first month of life. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit uh, a few days after, but not too much. Yeah. And we weren't able to do this, even though I had been wanting to do it since before he turned thirty days, yeah. but. Um, it's a lot going on every day. Our schedules are so very tight right now. Yeah. It's just like how she said, I'm supposed to be sleeping right now. I'm not supposed to sleep. I usually don't go to sleep at 7. I'll go to sleep later. We had came but home early. We, we got home at 6.30 p.m. And I asked him if he could uh, record a video for me because it was early. It was early <laughs> then, but it's not anymore. So... Thank you so much for doing this video with me, babe. I got you, I got you. Love you. Love you too. Um, I want to thank you guys as well. If you guys stayed this long, I think I'm going to upload the whole video. Um, the last time I separated the video that I had, it was like 30 minutes for one, and then like 15 minutes for the other one. So I think um, I'll just keep this like that. That way it could be a whole video and all the information in one. I wanted to put a few little videos into this one. But it literally looks like a video in its own. So I think I'm going to just... Keep it as it is. I think I'm going to keep it as it is. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much if you guys stay to watch the video. And listen to our story about Brayden. With little stories in between. <laughs> yeah, like, um, branches and everything. Yes. Um, thank you so much. Go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to do a pop-up right here. And then don't forget to leave a comment down below. If you guys want to keep... Um, if you guys want me to keep up with these videos about the information with Brayden and all of that. Alright. So, you want to so. see Thanks for watching, bye. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks for watching. I just, uh, like how she said, you stuck all the way to the end. Thank you. Yeah, I know we talk a lot. I know we're all over the place. Bear with us. And, you know, at, at first I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> He's <was laughs> nervous. Still, still new to me. But, yeah. Appreciate your guys' time. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Show how we there. And... Yeah. So, all right, so... Bye. Bye.